Hello everyone and welcome to An Academy. Even after years of education, there are always some things that some people still mess up. For me, it's numbers. For others, it's laws of physics and for so many of us, it's grammar. And it's not easy, right? Because how do you prevent grammatical errors if you're not even aware of your making them? So in this course, we'll try to spot, identify and rectify some of the most common grammatical errors we all make and we should really stop making them now. So a lot of grammatical errors in this course shall focus on uh, the problem that they, are, they sound similar. Sometimes something as simple as a comma can create a problem. So in multiple lessons, we'll try to see uh, the most common grammatical errors that we all make. So the first one again uh, may, creates a trap of pronunciation when we talk about there versus there versus there. Sounds so similar, right? Exactly similar. So there are just three things that you need to understand. The first there is a contraction of they are. Okay. One, the second one, which is there refers to a group of people. And the third one refers to a place. Still confused? Don't worry. Just read a correct usage and it'll all be clear. They're going to love going there. I heard their food is the best. So only three things that you need to understand is if you're talking about some people and what they are doing, that's the first, the contraction of they are. Second one is a group of people that's there, their house, their club, their food. And the third one is there, like a simple place. I want to go there. Do you want to go there, etc. Second one, again, uh, falls into the same category of pronunciation trap. Your versus your. The difference between these two is owing something versus actually being something. For example, a lot of people and you must have seen a lot of memes about your welcome. So when you say your welcome, you're actually just saying you are welcome. And you see the difference, right? Your is possessive and you are is just a contraction of you are. Again, if you're having trouble keeping them straight, just try to ask yourself these questions that whom are you addressing and read some of the few correct usage and you'll get a hang of it. The third one is it's versus it's. This one tends to confuse even best of writers. It's is possessive and it's with an apostrophe is a contraction of it is. So the first one here, it's always the abbreviation of it is. For example, it's a nice day. So we can instead say it is a nice day. The second it's without an apostrophe, it's possessive of it as in. For example, we say um, here we are talking about a puppy, but I don't know its name. Okay, so it is something that belonging to. So wherever there is some sense of belongingness, you use the it's without an apostrophe. The fourth is incomplete comparisons. This one really drives me up a wall when I see it in the white. Can you see what's wrong in the sentence that's written on the screen? Our car model is faster, better, stronger. Hold on. Faster, better, stronger. Then what? Are you trying to compare your car to a horse, a competitor's car, an older model? When you are asserting that something should be compared to something else, please make sure you always clarify what that something else is. Otherwise, it becomes very difficult for your readers to understand what the comparison actually means. Now, passive voice. Active voice and passive voice have haunted a lot of students in the early classes. Okay, so just read the sentence. If you have a sentence with an object in it, basically a noun that receives the action, passive voice can happen to you. <clears throat> Hold up. Reread the last paragraph I just wrote. There's way too much passive voice. See how it seems kind of jumbled and not quite clear and punchy. So now let's try again. Passive voice happens when you have an object, a noun that receives the action as the subject of a sentence. Makes sense? It's a kind of a complicated thing to describe. Okay, but please, please, please try and practice it because active voice and passive voice and an incorrect usage of it can be really big turn off. 
So the last topic for this lesson is dangling modifiers. And the way I kept it for the last is because I love the name of it, this mistake. It makes me think of a dramatic life. Of course, grammar mistakes are never drastic, but it helps me to remember them when I'm writing, okay? So that's how you can create some fancy names for the mistakes and then avoid using them. So this mistake happens when a descriptive phase doesn't apply to the noun that immediately follows it. Okay, don't go to the formal definition. Please read the sentence. After declining for months, John tired. John tried a new tactic to increase rate of return. Again, hold up. What exactly is declining for months? John or what? In reality, the sentence was trying to say that the return on investment was declining and not anything else. To fix this problem, try flipping around the sentence structure. Now read it again. John tried a new tactic to increase rate of return after it had been declining for months. Better, right? So this is one simple trick then that you just restructure the sentence and you can come to know what's the error and you can also avoid using them. So this was for this lesson. Stay tuned for the next one where we'll try to address some more similar kind of errors, more simpler, more funny and how we can avoid them. So this is Pooja signing off for now. Thank you so much for being here. Stay tuned and see you soon.